Oh no, the cameras aren't on. Jeez, what a dumb dumb. I'm sorry, I was rushing. <laughs> now it's gonna be a problem. Give me a second to get this thing fixed up. Is that better? Um, yeah, hi. I was rushing to get down here because I had to feed the dog and um, forgot to turn the cameras on. <laughs> Good morning, all. Um, welcome to Coffee and Crafts with old Johnny here. So let's, let's get to it. Um, we had an interesting morning, um, and I got new glasses, by the way, so I hope that the glare is not too... I'll keep them on, but the glare, I can see the glare. It's, it's, it sucks. Um, I Just take them off. I, I'd rather not have the glare and look at my young face. Somebody told me in Atlantic City, um, you look much younger in person than I expected you to look. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a compliment or what. Like, I'm better looking in person, I guess, but I look like a, like an old hag on, on TV, I suppose. I don't know. Um, but anyway, there, here we are. We're, we're, it's time to play a little bit of craps and talk about um, the hedgy way, the mathy way to play. We're going to get into that here in a minute. But before we do, um, let's run into um, review session here. Let's do a little class in session. Let's talk about the paycheck and how it went this morning. It's all about the lighting. Here, let's do this. It's all about the light. Yeah. Um, the lighting. I'm not good at lighting. Um, I don't really, I know people are good at, like, I get the, the little shine. I get bad shadows. I don't really know how to make it, make myself look good. I, I don't know. I'm just I am what I am, right? <laughs> um, anyway, here we go. The daily paycheck working the Dolly Ladderson this week. Um, yesterday was easy. Yesterday, pff, I think I made it in like ten rolls. I, it was like no brainer, right? Bunch of sevens, super quick, done. Um, today was interesting. Same thing happened today. We got right to we got to five thousand five hundred and sixty bucks in like eight rolls. Like I literally point seven out, point got a number. You know, and we had a little bit of adversity in there. But there was I think I knocked off a, a my first point was a ten. I knocked it off, right? I knocked off another one along the way, but we laddered up and got to our goal almost instantly. It seemed like right, um, and then we had the the choice to make. We had we had one seventy five I think, or one fifty. We had on the on the on the six. On a don't don't pass point with six, we're at fifty four sixty in the rack, right? What can you do in that situation, right? Well, I could have placed the six for one hundred and fifty bucks, right? Which means on the seven, you win twenty five dollars. The six wins one seventy five, wins twenty five bucks, right? We're in the perfect scenario there. Right? We would have won twenty five bucks either way. We would have been basically at five thousand four ninety five on our bankroll. We would have been five bucks off the goal, no matter what happens. That would have been the smart thing to do, okay? When you're playing paycheck style and you get within spitting distance of it, you got to get out, right? There's no law that says you have to win exactly 500 bucks or 10%. If I win 9.98%, done. You should be done. I should have pulled out at that point. We should have been off the table, hedged it off, and been out of here. That's the way we should have played that hand. But I'm like, 50 bucks, let's just go for it again. Well, guess what? Chasing that 50 bucks, we lost 1,200 bucks. In the ensuing rolls, we had a 25 roller follow that. I picked myself off. I picked myself off again and again and again, right? Our flat bets went from one and a quarter or 150 all the way up to 300 bucks. That's how many times we lost. If you're playing the Dolly Ladderson and you're going up by a quarter on every loss, our last bets were 300 bucks, which means we lost eight times on the way to that bet. But what happened? It felt bad, right? We were on that big roll. I'm knocking myself off. I'm like, oh my God, what are we going to do, right? Well, guess what? We avoided the point, luckily, the four and five were the point. We avoided it for, for a hot minute, knocked ourselves out with the seven, which is great, right? That wins you 600 bucks. Very next shooter, set a point, don't come moves to a point, boom, seven immediately, 1,200 bucks in five rolls, right? Because that's what the sevens do. Right, the dark side wins because the dark side wins. Ultimately, you're not going to have 25 rolls followed by 25 rolls followed by 25 rolls. You're going to have that shooter. You got to survive it as a dark side player, and then it's going to be shit, 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 and more shit, and you're going to win. And that's why this thing works. Um, I think the laddering that we're doing there is the right way. I definitely think the change we made today, which was. When you have a don't come set and the shooter knocks off the don't pass, so you have a, 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 the shooter's coming out, but you got a DC set, I think in that situation, you don't come out on the don't pass. I think we let the come out seven win on that set DC, right? And then pick up our second seven on a new DC bet. I don't think if we have the, the, the don't pass and we get a seven and we tie, that's 
almost that's that's um not desirable let's just put it that way i think we should probably leave what we did um i'm gonna also try i think by thursday what i said was if we decide to ladder up we're gonna say flat don't pass is our 100 and 100. if we lose the next don't pass that gets set is still at 100 but we're gonna put 30 in odds if we lose again, it's going to be still flat 100, but it's going to be 60 in odds. We'll use our odds maybe as the thing that ladders up, not the flats. That way the flats don't get destroyed in the come outs, but the odds make us more money when we're out there. I think that's going to be a thing. I think that's going to be a, a, a way to do it. Um, we'll try that on Thursday. So um, let's see. Let's go back to here. Um, and I see a couple questions here. Um, Darksider is asking me, uh, you want to watch the trip report. What was the best play that made money? So... We got killed, and here's what happened. I, I'll give you the really quick rundown of it because it's important for people who didn't hear it to hear it. <laughs> on the table, that was really bad. We had a table. Actually, every table was bad. The first table I played on the night I got there was was not good. Um, I tried to do, I tried that damn skill switch, right, which was a, a 25 hour don't, 66 inside, and go, you know, 66, one hit to 88 take the second hit, come down, and let the don't pass be the thing, right? I tried to do that, never hit it. Not one person hit two box numbers um, or two inside numbers. So that, that 66 died every single time. The don't pass ended up winning, but you're, you're, you're losing 40 bucks or so every single time. Plus, we got beat on the come out a lot. That didn't work. The next day, I tried the horseman with our team, right? We had the team at the private table. I tried the horseman, same thing. Never got a come out horn number. So the don't pass only lost on the come outs and never had a come out winner, only lost on the come out. That, except for when D-Gen. D-Gen did have a, a series where he made me uh, two or three of those. Um, then we would get, you know, the come bets would either get set, 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 and then seven out. So you'd lose, you know, <laughs> you end up winning the don't pass only. Um, or I, they were picking the quick point. Like I would see a come out seven, set a number, you know, put the, you know, the, the comeback goes to like the eight or something and they, they hit the eight and then they come out seven. Like that's what was going on. Nothing was working. We had a hot roll and I started going out with tear pressure on the hot roll. I started out with a 66 press. I went to tear pressure because I know that's the best way. That's the best way to make money for a conservative yet kind of aggressive player. The problem with tear pressure is that it's complicated. Um, yeah, my image reversed because, um, there's a camera setting I didn't check, I, and I, I'm just here. I'll, I'll let, let me get it right. It's, it's at, see, Victor, you're the kind of guy that notices that that sort of thing. Um, let me do this. Let me do. I don't know why it's why is it reversed. It's weird. Mirror options. There's there's the right way. There's a there's a, there's a button on here that somehow got checked. I don't know why. Um, there we go. That's so weird. Um, anyway, on the good table when we had the hot roll. Tear pressure was working great, but the dealers hated it. Cause you go, you know, it's, it's, it's full press, full press, full press, full press, make everything look, look like 330. Full press, full press, full press, full press, make it look like 550. They did not like coming down from full presses into an even bet when you reset your level. They hated that. They just couldn't figure it out. It was the box person that helped her do the math. It was just, it was a freaking nightmare. Um, so although it's a good strategy to play, I'd play it on bubble, but I would never play it live again. Um, so I switched over to Philly special the Philly special was easy to bet. The dealers understood the bets and that thing made me a ton of money. So it was great. Um, that's, that's how I did it. I think, I think Philly, Philly special is going to be, uh, the way to attack hot rolls. Philly special plus half pressing <clears throat> tats on the wrong arm. Yeah. You notice that. That's, I wonder why it flipped. That's so weird. Um, Anyway, yeah, and I'm not worried about, oh, you're talking about the gen about offending people. Don't worry about offending people. Um, it, it, dice are going the way. The dice are going the way. It is what it is. Um, the thing is, I couldn't pick up, and Jen, I know, we couldn't pick up that table. Like, Dark Side was getting murdered because of the come outs. And, um, and what you would see is a come out seven, a point get hit, the buck shot, come out seven, point get hit, seven out. So what happens is nobody makes any money, right? The right siders got paid on the pass line. They never get paid in the box because it's too quick, right? Everything was a disaster. Um, it was what it was. Um, so anyway, there, there's all that. Um, let's, I want to go to my screen real quick. I want to, give me a second to switch screens here. I, I want to, I'm going to pull up Firefox real quick. Um, I want to ad address a question that Jen had. And um, 
Let me go over here and we're gonna look at the, at the 401G account thing because this is a question that came up at the very, very end of the other, of the other show. So here's the 401G. This is actually the, um, this is the uh, daily paycheck sheet. I'm gonna go to casinogaming.tv. Hold on a second. Casinogaming.tv. I'm gonna open up my 401G account thing. And I wanna talk about this with Jen because I think this is important. I'm gonna, Jen, this is a show just for you, babe. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. And let's chat about these accounts. Can I get in a little further without it being a mess? All right, so here's where we currently are. Okay, and what I'm doing every day is I'm doing the withdrawal of 5,000 bucks, like today, and we deposit, this is my mistake here, so I put in 675, uh, that's where I owe the money. Um, you, you, you deposit some, you, you put some back. Um, Jen asked me, why do you put money here instead of putting money back in here, okay? And we can talk about ways to manage your 401G account. I think there's interesting things to think about here. So one thing that you could do is say, well, if I'm looking to earn 500 bucks a day, right, and I need that to live, think of it as, as money laundering in this respect. Let's say your, your 401G account started out with $100,000, okay? The goal is to make 100,000 from 100,000. Turn $100,000 into 100,000. So by winning 500 bucks a day for 200 days or whatever it takes, right, you got 100,000 bucks. That's the goal. If you can make this be 100 and this be 100 at the end of the year, that is eventually the goal. What you can do, Jen, is withdraw 5,500 every day out of the G account and immediately deposit 500 bucks into your earnings account. Like I'm taking 500 bucks out of this account no matter what, so we can pay our bills and do our thing. Now what you gotta do is win 5,500 to replenish, right? You can look at it that way. So I'm always gonna put 500 over here. I'm look, I gotta put 5,500 back in here every day. That might be the way to approach this thing, mentally. Um, what I'm doing is pulling five, stashing, winning five, putting five back. It can be seen the same way. At the end of the day, you wanna have 100K in both accounts, right? That's the idea. If not, then what happens is you burn the entire 100, and only have 100, and you just moved it from here to here, then that means you lost 100K for the year, right? If at the end of the year you have 100 here and 50 here, you didn't, you didn't make your goal, right? So that's kind of what I'm going back for, right? So you can withdraw more, deposit 500, and put $5,500 back in again if you're looking to live on that money. I'm looking at it like I'm challenging myself to take five and win five. Win, take 5K, win 500. Either way you want to manage that, totally up to you. I can start doing that if it makes sense to everybody, but at the casino, what I'm probably gonna do is take the marker for $5,000, right? Give them the 5K back and take the $500 with me, right? Either way you wanna do, that's totally cool, right? So there it is. Um, that's, I wanna make sure we talked about that. And again, folks, if you want to, and you have an account, all you gotta do, right, is log in, use the login button over here um, on the top right-hand side, that login button. If you have an account with us, with us at Discord, this is yours. You can come in here and go to tools, 401G, and you can set up as many accounts as you want to and move money around, fake money. It's all fake money. Nobody knows what you have in your actual bank. This is just kind of like in your crapsy accounts, whatever, kind of log your winnings here. And you know, if you want to use this as kind of a visual reminder where you are in your life with your gambling, this is a good way to just kind of keep visual track of it. So anyway, it's, it's a free thing <laughs> that's part of Casino Gaming TV. Just be part of Discord and uh, there you go. So that's it. Um, let's go back over, let me hide that and go back over to here and talk to y'all again. All right, so um, now that the screen is facing the right direction, we have good lighting, I look nice and young. Let's get back into the, into the meat of the day here. The meat of the matter is gonna be this. I wanna talk to you about, well, of course, let's, a quick reminder. Friday Night Fights um, will be Crap and Camper versus Crapsy and Crap Chat is Sunday. I expect a lively Craps Chat this week. I love that show, as you know. I expect a good one. Right, everybody who's going to be on the show was in, was in AC. We can all bitch about some of the tables and, and talk about how we did things. So that'll be a fun one, I think. You've heard my take on it. I know Jeff's got a trip report coming. I'm sure that Craps Chat will cover some of that stuff. And I think a big topic of conversation would be for everybody to talk about how they played the role. Right, we got that one really awesome role. How did everybody attack it? You know, I had my way. We talked about it yesterday. Um, I have regrets about what I did, but I also do. So I have. Watch yesterday's show, you can, you can see, I could have made so much more money on that role, but um, because I was gun shy, 
And so far, I, I started that role so far behind, I didn't go in there with both feet. I went in there, I dipped my toe in the water for the first 15, 20 rolls, caught a good run at the end there. Um, it is what it is. All right, here we go. Um, I wanna talk to you about who you are as a gambler. We haven't done this in a while. Um, but let's, let the, not that, not that. Oh, although this, if you wanna come to Seattle, let me know. Um, I'm talking about doing a Seattle meetup with Jeremy. <clears throat> maybe like end of July, August-ish timeframe. So let me know if you wanna come in Discord or email or text, whatever, let me know. We'll get the list going. But more importantly, um, I wanna talk about personality and play style. Um, Louis says, I may have been gun shot, but I still won. And this is the thing, right? Let's, let's put that up while we're talking about this. Because what kind of player are you, right? Um, I, I am interesting uh, as a player and, I, and I'm fully aware Right, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm fully aware that I'm a disaster in the head, right? My, I, I can be super disciplined, and I am super disciplined, but <clears throat> there's a part of me that wants to be really aggressive, right? There's the part of me that knows I have to be cautious, right? I don't have an actual $100,000 bankroll, right? At one point in time, I had a decent bankroll, right? But we use that for expenses, and life expenses, right? Um, Building the bankroll up right now, um, to me, five, six, seven thousand bucks isn't a lot of money, right? So that lets me buy in for a thousand and be okay with that. It doesn't let me buy in for a thousand every single time. It doesn't let me bring five k to the casino. So with a bankroll that's that small, over an overall bankroll that's that small, I'm kind of in builder mode, right? I'm in bankroll builder mode, which means most of the time I'm cautious. My nature is to mm, go after it, right? You see how I play the don't pass, right? When I play the don't pass, I know Darksider hates how I do it. I hammer those wins, man. I'm like, give me three on the come out, boom, stacking that baby up. I'm gonna be aggressive even on the most low house edge play, the don't pass. I'm hyper aggressive when I get a chance to be. However, cautious because I have to be. Does that make sense? Cautious because I have to be aggressive because I wanna be. Marrying those two concepts is really hard. Right? But I know where I am. I know where, how I play. That's why the horseman works for me right now. That's why when I get a chance to go Philly Special, I do. Right? Some of you are thinkers. And I want to talk to the thinkers out in the room today. And um, I wish my pen was working. I would draw you some pictures. But um, the, the thinkers, think about this, please. Um, you are the guys that look at the probabilities. You're the guys that look at the math. You're the guys that look at hybrids and where can I be protected? The thinker is thinking about how are they getting beat and how are they gonna win, right? The cautious player is talking about how am I gonna get out of here, right? What do I gotta do to get out quick and safely, right? The aggressive player is thinking about what do I gotta do to make a million bucks? The thinker is gonna be saying, how can I beat the game? You can't beat the game, but how can I how can I put everything in the right spot so I'm not going to get destroyed? That's the thinker. Sometimes the thinker is playing pure math, right? But most of the time what they're doing is they're trying to set themselves up for not success, but set themselves up not to fail. And that's where you're going to see um, a lot of hybrid play, a lot of hedge play, a lot of talking through probabilities and that kind of thing. So that's going to be your thinker. That's dialing, right? That's that style, that's Jacob from Wager Me This, is a thinker. When I look at those two, I don't put them in the cautious or the aggressive categories at all. I put them in the thinker plays. They're, they're, the, they're the guys at the craps table that you want to be next to to understand how their brain works. So that's, that's those two. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, I see Chris is here. Hey. Good morning, Chris. Chris from Sideshow Gamble has joined us from afar. Um... Yeah, eager to see uh, my thoughts on your gambling bankroll coming soon. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, good to see. I hope you're doing well over there, man. Um, over to, it's been a long time. I can't wait to get back. When do you get back? Can you put some chat? When, do you, or, or can you say? Are you allowed to say when you're coming back? Um, I, I want to say you're coming back in November, but I'm not sure if you're allowed to even talk about it. Um, anyway, good to see Side So Gamble in the house. That's great. So, all right, thinkers. Let's get back to our thinker mentality. Um, what does a thinker do? Um, well, they got to make sure their bankroll's tight, right? A thinker 
It's not going to typically feel like they're October, November. Cool. That's awesome. We'll see you back in October. I can't wait to get back, man. Um, the thinker um, doesn't necessarily feel forced into a way of playing. Right? You're right, Dark. The thinker will follow trends as well. Um, and I think that's a that's a, a piece of it. Right? And I'm going to get, we'll, we'll do that through the course of the week here. I've got thinker strategies for us all week long. Um, the thinker is going to follow trends. And, and there's a little bit of like, again, math involved in that. A little bit of like, you know, X chances to win on the next roll. The thinker is going to be way more, way more out here, but a lot of times they're protecting. Today we're going to talk about the protection ways, the ways that thinkers protect themselves. They're not going to feel forced into a way that doesn't match how they want to play because they're typically thinking through all the possibilities that are going to happen. And I think with a thinker especially, you're, you're missing your, your, I'm reading Chris's thing at the same time, um, knowing your goals, right? Um, are you looking for the consistent win? I think a thinker is, is a lot like the conservative guy, looking for consistent wins, right? They're not looking to make huge disposable income. They're not looking to hit home runs for the most part. They're, unless you're pure trend betting. If you're a pure trend better and you're hopping the trends, that person's looking for to destroy a table. If they're thinking through what they're seeing, and if you look at somebody, and I'll give you another, another place to go. I'll put it in chat, actually. Go to... Um, this channel, VDC and CDC. It's in the, in the chat there. Go to that channel. Um, Rich is a great dude. He's got a lot of videos out there on trend betting. Um, he, a lot like Blacklight, does a lot of trend betting. Um, big time thinker. Big time thinker. And he, he leans a lot into causality with regards to when I see this, this, and this, that means that's coming. Um, he thinks through that kind of stuff. He's looking to destroy a table. But the thinkers I'm talking about today are more the hedge hybrid style thinkers that are trying to kind of play the odds against the odds. So with that said, um, let's, let's jump ahead and, and, and think about what are some of the ways that thinkers play, right? Um, they're normally pretty protective of their bankroll, right? They're normally protective of their bets. Today we're going to talk about hedging to keep things safe and the ways to use opposing bets and regressions to make it happen, okay? Um, regressions, the 66, right? The squeeze play, the drawdowns, hedges like the Moonbow, the Storm, the 678, the Vitamix that I showed you a couple weeks back, transitional plays like the Horseman and the Skill Switch. Those are thinker plays. Does the Red Cross fit? It's kind of a thinker play because the Baccarat on the line does follow the trend of what's happening. It follows the dark or the light trend on the Baccarat style while something else is happening. There's a lot of like, let's make sure we're doing some of this to keep the engine kind of running, like some line betting or some, some, some box betting while we're doing the hops, while we're doing the line switch, while we're doing other trend catchers. A lot of times thinkers are doing two things at once. I say this a lot, I've got, I'm gonna play the line and the box as two separate plays. You hear me say that a lot, right? The skill switch does that. We're going to play the box. <clears throat> we're going to play the line. Two separate plays, not really looking to hedge, looking to win it on opposite sides of the table. That's a thinker play. All right. Let's go back to the table. I want to, I want to put some stuff out here on the felt and we'll roll it out. Um, I got to turn the camera on. So give me a second here to turn the camera on. Let's do this view here. Get that camera turned on and give me a second here to get the lighting right on it so we can play. I think, oh, it actually looks pretty good out of the gate. Um, all right. And, um, the chips are popping, aren't they? These are the boring, like poker chips. I just ordered new chips, um, for myself. Um, so all the Procrafts ones that were hard to see are going away. The new chips are very much bright like this on the outside and have my skull on the inside. So they're going to see them pretty quick. All right. Let's look at a couple of things and I want to really dive into something. Let's, let's, let's do something uber simple. Okay. This is going to be a discussion to start with about, um, about exposure. Let's take this. Do I need this in the rack? I don't even need a rack, actually. Let's put the rack over here. Don't even need it. Um, let's, let's look at this. Let's look at a... I want to analyze... A, a, the, we'll do the 555678, five, okay, which is a super simple little strategy. Okay? It's, a, it's a low risk way to play. It's definitely a thinker strategy. Okay? What are, we, what are we looking at here as far as our probability? I want to talk to you about probabilities a little bit. How many ways can this bet win? 
And I want you to tell me right now in chat. I know you all know the answer to this question, but what are the, what are the odds of that bet winning, okay? You can win on, and I'll put them in green. We'll put the green chips for, for our wins, right? We can win on the one way to roll an ace-deuce, or the, the aces, and the two ways to roll the ace-deuce. We can win on the aces and the ace, three ways to win, okay? The 12, as you know, is a push or it's a non-event. Better way to look at it, right? How many ways can you lose that bet? Well, you can lose it on the two ways to roll the 11, and you can lose it on the one, two, three, four, five, six ways to roll a six, okay? Eight ways to lose, three ways to win. That's what happens. Now, how do you calculate what your actual percentages are? Here's the, the thing you have to think about. It looks like it's an eight to three. That's what you'd say, or a three to eight win rate or an eight to three loss rate. That's kind of how you can look at it. Um, the right way to calculate this though is this. Put all these in a, in a bucket, right? You put all the possible outcomes. You gotta eliminate the non-outcomes. Eliminate the non-ways to win, okay? So if you put, let's put all these chips into a bag, let's say like a, like a grocery bag, okay? Now you look at, well, how many outcomes versus total outcomes are there? So you have three out of 11 ways to win. You have eight out of 11 ways to lose. That's the way you do the math. And if we go to the, to the, to the computer here, I'm gonna walk over and just type this. You guys can't see this, but if I do um, three divided by 11, Right, it's a 27% chance to win, right? If I do eight divided by 11, it's a 72% chance to lose, okay? It's not just three out of 36 to win, right? Which is the, oh, which is the odds, the probability of an outcome that costs you or wins you money. That's how you look at, look at these. Every bet on the table has that math behind it, right? It's not just, Three ways to win out of 36. It's out of the outcomes that could cost me money or earn me money. I have three ways out of a total of 11. There's five, right? There's your 10, there's your 11 ways to win, right? 11 ways to outcome. You look at the possible money changers, okay? So remember that, that little trick. Put them in a, a bucket and no. There's a 27% chance to win. There's a 72% chance to lose that bet on the come out roll, right? The other, and again, that, that discounts all the box numbers, right? Discounting the 12 and the box numbers, right? Those are non-events. You only really care about, when you're looking at probability calculations, calculating the events that impact you. And the impactful events are losses and wins, how many total, and what does it look like? So, when you get that bet set, let's say we get a nine as a point, and you're gonna do the, the six, seven, eight, the actual, Perfect six, seven, eight looks like this, okay? Now things switch and you say, well, again, the thinker looks at this and goes, well, okay, at worst, worst case scenario, right? We hit the nine, we have a quarter at risk against the nine. We've got uh, 60 bucks at risk against the seven, but really 25 of it is there. So your actual seven risk is 35 bucks, okay? So again, the thinker's doing math, right? The worst they can lose on any one roll is either 25 bucks on the nine or 35 bucks on a seven. So even though they've got a total of 80 bucks out here, 85 bucks out here, they're never at risk more than 35 bucks. The thinker looks at this and goes, well, I got 10 ways to win. Waylon has said this, I have 10 ways to win. I got six ways to lose, right? Advantage you in that situation. Let's look at the probabilities. How, does, how do you calculate that? I want you to take a look at this. And there's not six ways to lose here. There's more than that. Right, how many ways do you have to lose on this, on this table, right? You've got six ways, one, two, three, four, five, six ways to lose those two bets, and you've got four ways to lose on this bet. Four ways to lose that, six ways to lose these. How many ways can you win, right? Here, and we can look at just the, we can take that out of it for now. Just the six and the eight, six ways to lose, and we can do Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ways to win. Six to ten. If you reduce the fraction down, right, that becomes three to five. Okay? That's how that actually reduces down. Three to five. Three ways to lose, five ways to win. Again, you put these into a into a into a hat, right? 
Those are the outcomes that can exchange money for you. Okay, five ways to, to, to you know, shake them up. And it, don't even need dice. I can just m monkey with these and go in here and grab a random chip and say, oh, I got an eight. Yay, we won money, right? That's kind of how you look at that. What is the math on that, right? Out of, out of, out of eight ways, you have five ways to win. What is eight divided by five or five divided by eight? That's how you do the math. I'll do it over here. I'm going to walk up. Five divided by eight, 62.5% chance to win. Right? That's your chance to win against the seven versus three divided by eight, 37 and a half percent chance to lose. Right? That's how you figure those probabilities out. It's not just 10 to 10 to six. Right? Do the math of the outcome. So when you're thinking through your bets, here you got the 67% chance to win over in here. But over here, you've got again four ways to lose on the nine. And you've got six ways to win, one, two, three, four, on the seven. Reduce that down, you can get down to three to two, which you know is the odds. And again, three to two, now you've got five ways, five outcomes that change money for you. Two of them are bad, right here. Three of them are good, right here. So this bet, you're at 66% or whatever that is. Whatever, whatever, what is your chance to win against that nine is three divided by five. Three divided by five is 60%, okay? That's why we say when the don't pass gets through, that's a hammer, right? It's 60% chance to win here. And it looks like you're, you're a three to two advantage, right? That's 60%, that's how, that, that's how the math works. Over here, it's actually 66% and over here, it's 54%, okay? So look at this. When you're setting up your, 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 your thinker bets, right? You gotta look at A, the money that can exchange hands, and B, the actual chances to win. So you got, again, a 67% chance here to win, a 60% chance here to win that bet. The, com the combination of all of it though, right? That money that you have all together between the bets is where it gets sticky and messy. But again, you can only lose a quarter or 35, and that's how this person's playing the game. I actually tried this a little bit in AC, didn't work at all. Why doesn't it work at all? Because it's only 10. It's only 10, right? You could be in here, let's actually set it up. Let's, let's pretend we had a point of nine. Let's roll for a second, let's just see what happens. Um, you're gonna miss, now I'm, I'm not gonna count the stinking field because I don't play the field very much, but you're missing out on everything other than those two numbers, right? So you don't get, this, 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 or this, right? You're missing out on a bunch of combinations here. You limited yourself to this. You're only playing really five numbers against three, right? Or whatever that was. Uh, 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 10, against, 10 against six, yeah, five against three. That's all you're playing against. So we lose. You lose 35, you win a quarter, okay? The thinker walks out of there not too bad, right? He gets to place his bet, he has to go back to his rack, right? Whereas somebody playing pure right side gets beat for the whole 60, right? But their wins are gonna be cleaner, okay? Their wins are gonna be cleaner. That's the difference between the right side, pure right side <clears throat> versus the dark side, because again, if you got a hedge like this or a hybrid style play like this, the seven wins, right? It helps up in here, but these wins over here are gonna eat that one up. And that's, I think that's where we end up having a problem, especially if you're gonna play across. So that's, I think, I don't know if I wanna say much more than that on this, um, other than to know how you're calculating. Now let's look at the come outs. Two ways to play this <clears throat> on the come out. We've talked about this, right? The $1, $2 on the yo, to hedge out one of those ways to lose. Let's take a look at what happens now. You've got <clears throat> same two, three, four, five, six ways to lose on the come out, three ways to win, okay? If you do this, you take away two of those ways, right? You take away the two combinations of that 11 that are gonna get you, you take them away. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, sorry. There's the two, you take those two ways away. So now you're set to where this is the way you lose now. You only lose one 
one way, only on the six. And again, three ways to win, six ways to lose. If you reduce the fractions, you're here. You're two to one, right? Two to one difference, winning, losing. It's a 30, and again, put them in the, in the, in the bucket. Out of three outcomes, one of them is yours, 33% chance, two are bad. <clears throat> when you're a two to one dog, right? It's a 66% chance to lose. It's not two to one like you think, like 50% better. It's actually 33% versus 66% chance to lose, but you're gonna bleed that out, okay? The thinker may also do this. They may also do <clears throat> 50 bucks up here. <coughs> Excuse me, end that. Now, how are we looking? What's our looking like now? So let's do all the numbers here, right? If you're thinking through this stuff, and you're gonna hedge the whole freaking thing, right? The 11 gets nullified by the $2, okay? This up here is gonna cost you a buck in vague. So you have $3 kind of given away. So what are, what are we looking at now? Now we're looking at, on the seven, there's no loss. There's no way to lose on a seven now, right? There's no way to lose on the 11. You can only win on the two and the three. Those are winners for you, right? But they're less because when a two or three comes, you're gonna end up losing this one for sure, right? How do you lose? Well, you lose up here. You lose on the three ways to roll the 10. Okay, you lose, and it looks like you're even, right? It looks like your, your odds cancel out because you're one to one, right? You have three ways to win on a two or the three. You have three ways to lose on the six, four, the four, six, and the five, five. So you have, again, if you put all this in a bucket, you got a 50-50 shot, 50% chance of winning, 50% chance of losing. And again, discounting these, these are not events, okay? When these happen, you will always lose the two bucks. You will get this back if you pull it, okay? On the odds. But think through that piece of it. What are your overall chances to win or lose and do the right math, right? This is gonna be, in this case, one divided by, or two divided by, or one divided by two, 50%. That's, that's how you calculate that out there. And again, I get it. What's better? What's better? We talk about this all the time. What's the better, what's the better outcome for you? What does your bankroll say? Remember we talked about your bankroll putting you in positions where you're gonna make decisions? If your bankroll is loaded, right, the better move is not to have this lay over time. The law of big numbers says that losing $25, right, one every six times is better than losing 50 bucks three times, right? Because that's harder to recover from, right? You gotta work harder to get the 50 bucks back if you lose it. So, when you're thinking through, okay, if I do this and the 10 and I get for 50 bucks, I need to get $5 on the hard 10, right? Um, that's not even enough, that's 35. You need to get you know $7 or eight, I guess eight is probably better, right? Eight, eight times that, 56 bucks. So you went 56 bucks here, you got $50 over here. I can only lose now two ways. Now you're down to two ways to lose, except for this doesn't cover this in the loss, right? Now a seven's gonna take um, eight, nine, ten dollars from you, and so you're gonna win. You're gonna win twenty-five, which covers that. But you're gonna lose ten over here. So you you make matters worse the more you try and cover everything as a thinker, right? As a hedgy McHedgerson, hedgy wedgy kind of player, you end up getting in these boxes where you're not covering enough stuff. The cleaner way to do it is to just play it clean, right? Not burning eight dollars here on a seven or $10 here on the seven, thinking that you've got it all figured out and that lay is gonna cover you because now you gotta lay for 75 to make it work, which means this has to go up too. So chasing your tail, trying to hedge everything out is impossible. But let's play some six, seven, eight. Let, let's do it. Let's actually play the six, seven, eight for a minute and um, we'll, do it, we'll do it two players. I'm gonna do a, a hybrid player and I'm gonna do a switch player. And I want you to see the difference here. So we'll do a... One player over here, and we'll just, um, I'll put their wins in the field. It doesn't really matter. We're just gonna play it kind of simple. <clears throat> All right, so let's do, um, let's do like this. Let's have the first guy in the front. We'll just play the middle. Six, seven, eight, in, both gonna be inside players, okay? The switch guy in the back though is gonna pick up the point too. 
the way that I play it. A little more at risk up here. Okay, he's got 44, he's got uh, 34 at risk against, and they have some, some dull action here, right? One guy is gonna play these as separate things. One guy's gonna play them together, okay? Always have the seven working for himself. There's a three, that rolled, that was a three. Just play it through. There's a six, sweet. Okay, so six. <coughs> They both win a little bit of money here, 14 bucks on the six. Maybe I'll, now watch, I'm gonna have a hot roll and it's not gonna freaking matter, right? Um, they both win on that. And I think for our purposes, I'm just gonna stack the wins. I'm just gonna put the wins in their field. I'm not gonna do anything, anything crazy. Pressing wise, we'll just same bet everything because I wanna keep, I don't wanna make that the reason why somebody wins or loses. Another one, oh yeah, oh yeah. Let's do 15 for one for both players. 15 for one. Okay, um, this guy over here, actually I'm lying to you. I'm lying, I, I totally screwed that up because I'm an idiot. Let's do this, Let's. this guy is gonna say that. This guy over here is gonna do the, 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 the switch. So he would have on the first one, the 14 bucks, um, he would have done this. Oh God, what a dumbass. Sorry guys, I wasn't ready. Um, the first win, he presses up the six and the eight. He actually does press those up to 18. Because he's doing, he's doing the get in and get out. He's going to do two hits and out. So two bucks there. The second six comes. First guy does his 15 for one. The second guy here does 21. And he's done. 21 and he's back down to 64. Or 44. And he's out. That's his whole play. Right? He's going to have, what's that? Th uh, 30 bucks. 35 bucks. And he's off. He's off. So one person who's playing a quote unquote thinker system says, I'm gonna take how many ways to win on the inside? How many ways are there win, win on the inside? We can look at that math, right? You've got four, eight, and 10, 18 ways to win versus six ways to lose. So that's 18 over six. That's gonna be nine over three. That's gonna be one or um, three over one, right? So you're three to one favorite which means you're gonna do uh, f uh, uh, three divided by four, 75% chance to win up in the box. That's why you play that way. Same thing over here, but this guy here is not gonna stop. Here we're done. We've locked up, and this person here is gonna go from right to dark. Now he's gonna go, okay, now I only have the advantage of 60%. Now he's a 60% chance to win against that one. This guy over here is still trying to make it all happen. He's still gonna just let, let the six, seven, eight work its, work its way out and hopefully get the right outcome from it. There's a one, two, three. Take the same set of rolls here and see a quick comparison at the end. There's a nine. That's good, that's good. He's gonna get 15 for one. Probably will come out ahead, right? 15 for one. Hard six, 15 for one. Again, we're just gonna same bet him. He's probably gonna come out ahead the way these rolls are going. There's another sit, wow, look at this, look at this. All those sixes that are coming, it's amazing. Same betting, I'm just gonna same bet it until the seven comes. There's a 10, 10 is a non-event. Is it eight? This guy's gonna kill it. So my example sucks. Um, that's okay. Patient guy waiting it out. There's gonna be, um, eight's gonna pay 14 bucks. Nine. Wow, what a great roller we got here. Look at the careful guy. Look at the thinker making all the money over here, right? They're both thinkers, right? They're both just have a different goal. There's another 10. Like I brought the garage luck with me. Do y'all see my hat, by the way? I didn't show you my hat. I should put that out there while I'm rolling. That's the Mid-Atlantic Crafts hat. There's the five. The five's gonna come. This was a gift from Jeff on the uh, Atlantic City. I, should, I, I probably forgot to have that front and center. There it is. Okay, so we lose our don't pass down here. 
both guys lose that, which is a bummer on both, both cases, right? So how do we end up? This guy destroyed it. Um, this guy here has enough money to go back to his don't. $10 profit, but he stayed safe up top, which is cool. This guy over here goes back to his don't with a bigger profit. That time, it worked out. Let's get him some greens. Look at that. Where was this roll in Atlantic City, guys? God. Um, all right. Think or play. That worked out perfectly. Um, <clears throat> let's go. Let's go. Let's catch a new point. We got an eight. Point's going to be a four, four, hard eight. Let's, can you see the bet still or no? Can you still see him? You can. Move that up a little bit. All right. Um, the eight's going to, we're going to move him to the five. Guy in the bat's going to stay on everything. He's just looking to get in and get out. A couple inside hits and run for the run, run for the hills. That's a one and a one. There's the seven. Okay, what's going to happen here? They both get destroyed on the seven. Um, he's going to lose 44, but win 25. And what's the impact here, right? This guy in the front <clears throat> wins 25. What does he lose? He loses 25, 32 dollars. This 25. Essentially, he really only loses 12 bucks, right? Over here, the 25 covers basically the six and the eight. So he loses 20 bucks on that transaction. And you see how we're kind of like spinning our wheels a little bit on the sevens? That's the thing, the early sevens are gonna spin a little bit. Not a big deal. So here's 25, there's 35. He's down now 12 bucks. This man over here can replace everything and go back to, back to work. Let's put these back up again. There's his quarter. Back in the rack, he's going to, have to put 32 bucks back up. 25, 30, 32 dollars of his back, and he's back up. Now, are we trying to trend bet yet? No. Right? Maybe tomorrow we'll look at some, at some trending and see what's happening and start maybe hitting some field numbers. We'll start hopping the things that are coming. But again, trend betting is a whole different animal. Back to the eight. Ten, which nobody's on. Ten again, nobody's on it. An easy ten that time. Six, we got a six. All right, good. Um, Fifteen for one for the guy in the front. He's going to same bet it. Guy in the back is going to take the fourteen bucks. Press the six and the eight up, and try and get out. Nine. So he's out. Six, three, nine. First guy here, 15 for one. Same bet. Second guy down here is going to get the same thing. 15 for one. Pull the six and the eight back. Again, thinking through it, right? He's thinking, he's hedging, he's done, he's out. He's like, I'm done. Let the don't pass win money for me. The other guy here is still looking to get, get, get some cash out of the inside. Now he basically is even. Okay, think about that. This person right here in the front took same bet, same bet. That's $24 against his don't pass, right? So if we pick the eight right now and he loses his don't pass, he ends up on that part of the hand completely square, right? He won enough money to cover the loss on the don't. <clears throat> Anything else that he wins, like right now he just won 15 bucks. Okay, 15 for one. Guaranteed profit on the shooter. No matter what happens now, he's brought back 14, 14, and 14. So he's brought back, was that 30, 42 bucks? He had 32 bucks out here. He has 25 on the Actually, one more win, and he'll lock it all in. Not a bad little little run today for the hybrid guys. 6, 4, 10. Even at, even at a same bet. 3, 1, 4. Come on, something has to happen here. 4, 1, 5. That's good. Now I would say he's probably even for the shooter. There's a 15 for one. So he's taken 15 for one four times now. That's 60 bucks. 32 and 25 is $57. So at worst, he ends up in a tie. Right? At worst, he's got all his bets covered with pulls off the table. Doing great. He's doing great. There's the seven. 
Okay, so the 617 wins him an extra quarter. So he, he took off the table 60 bucks from his bets, plus 25, that's 85 bucks. He loses on the seven, 32. Net $50 win. Not bad. Over here, this guy took 25, 27, and 25. The same exact win, right? The same exact, no, almost the exact same profit level, right? But he got out quicker and thought through the probabilities and said, you know what, that seven is looming, right? Could the thinker be seen as a Charlie guy, as a DGE sort of uh, what's, what's, what's about to happen kind of a player? I don't know. You could probably argue for that, right? That the thinker is also a fallacy player. They may have it in their heads that something's about to happen. And that's why this guy over here gets out quick. Two hits and out, two hits and out, two hits and out because the seven's coming. And it worked out this time twice for him, right? Kind of interesting. That, by the way, I made that look really easy. Let's come back over here. I made it look really easy. Like I won that shit. Like both players won money. I'm going to tell you what, I ran both of those strategies out in the garage last week and lost 4,000 bucks. Um, I ran that one strategy in AC this weekend and lost about a thousand bucks on it. So that looked really simple and ain't like that. <laughs> um, but that's one way of looking at it. And I want you to, if nothing else, take away this. I don't care about whether you hedge or not. I want you to remember how to do the calculations, okay? Look at your total combinations, right? And again, it's not, let's say that you're on that come out. You've got six ways to lose on a seven, two ways to lose on an eight, that's, or the 11, that's eight ways total to lose, three ways total to win. You're not looking at three out of 36, right? Or eight out of 36. You're looking at the 11 combinations that transact money. 11 ways that you can either win or lose on that next roll. That's the probability calculation. So know that when you're doing this, that's how you calculate probabilities. It's the outcomes, not the ones that we, we throw away the ones that are not events. Make sure that was the one takeaway for today. So let's do that again. Um, I'll do another chart for that tomorrow so you can see how that works. My, my pen's not working, so I can't draw on the screen, but um, that's it. Nine o'clock, guys. I went a little long today. I'm sorry about that. I think we're going to go back to... Uh, I, I, I don't know if uh, Chris is doing a show today. Chris, are you doing a show today? You probably already left for it if he's still here or not. So, um, yeah, any PCs, any questions that I haven't gotten to yet? PC, let's see. Um, let's see. Corey says $500 a day is not realistic moving expenses. You're right. Um, let me go into that up there. So you're right. The, the $500 a day is not realistic for living. It, it's, again, you're doing this from a point of you've already got 100 grand. You've already got 100K in the bank and you're trying to basically make another 100 from the 100 over the course of a year. Like that's, if you're living on it, you got to be like Ken. You got to put that money in an envelope and you're, you're using it to pay bills. It's a whole different thing, right? You might even at the beginning of the month take out of your G account the whole month of expenses and then try and replace that, right, as you're going. A lot of ways to do it, but the point is, can we turn 100 into 200, 500 at a time? That's the, kind of the goal here, and that's the, that's the visual that I'm trying to, to produce there. So um, let's see. Um, can we get a Kraken banner instead of the Philly one? I don't have a Kraken banner. Um, maybe uh, maybe your wife can send me one, Ian. Um, yes, I think a Kraken banner. At some point, we'll go back to it. But you know what? The Flyers, man, I'm telling you what, I grew up, I grew up a Broad Street bully from when I was five. Like, I remember that team. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I could ever get rid of the Flyers better. Um, Texas Crap Shears, the question you asked should be, where am I at, not do I need to reduce my exposure versus every one roll? Don't change. What, I'm not sure what you're saying here. The question you ask, where am, I, where am I at, and do I need to reduce my exposure versus every one roll probability? Um, yeah. So it's not always one roll probability. When I do the, the probabilities in the box where you've got 10 ways to win on the six or eight and the six ways to lose it, that's the probability of those bets beating the seven over the course of the entire roll, like to the next outcome. It's always <clears throat> those probabilities you calculate on the next outcome. So 10 versus six, six and eight versus the seven, in other words, that probability is calculated on the next time money changes hands. The next time you win or you lose those bets, 
every roll, some bets, hops, one roll bets where you calculate that every single time. On those bets, you're calculating it on the lifetime of the bet because they sit there for a while, right? I think that's what you're asking me. And again, um, where are you at on all the rolls? You gotta look at all of it because you might have multiple box bets plus hops plus the seven. On a given roll, you have a, a, a chance to win or lose. On a set of rolls, like on the box numbers, you have a different set. So you have to kind of calculate those two things together. Um, okay, anything else, PCs? I got questions to answer. Um, when do you repay the marker? <clears throat> well, it depends, right? I, I don't do marker play yet. I would think that if you're, at, if you're playing marker play, the right way to do it, Mr. Organized, is every day. Every time you go, it's a new, it's a new marker. So if I take 5K and we go down to 2,500 hours, 2,500 bucks goes back into the marker. I still owe $2,500, right? You take 5,000 the next day and you're gonna work to pay that. By the end of the month, they take the marker back. So um, I gotta, oh, Charlie, hey, look at that. Drunk Guy Explains calling me right here. Um, I'll, give him a, I'll give him a shout here in a minute. Um, yeah, marker play is, when you get down into it, they, they, they settle every 30 days on those things. So you're gonna have to pump that thing back. You cannot do what I said earlier, which is like take 5K and keep 500. You gotta push it all back into the marker account. So different way to do it, for sure. Um, yeah, I think we're done. Um, I think it's it. It's all the questions I got. I know Chris has got to go. I got to go to work. I got to call Charlie back actually. So um, that's it. Happy Tuesday. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to do, I think tomorrow, I think, I forget, uh, tomorrow show transitions. I got a show I'm doing on transitions and a show I'm doing on something else this week to cover the thinking man's way of playing. So yeah, the transition play is going to be kind of fun to, to look at. I have a lot of ways that I transition um, and I do want to get into trending. I want to get into those, I, I think those, those progressions, positive and negative progressions are also a thinking person's way to play. So there it is, guys. Have a good one. I'll see you. There goes my, there's my, there, I was waiting for it. My, my thumbs down person just, just came and gave me the big thumbs down. Why? I don't know. What did I just say that caused you to say, I don't like you anymore? Somebody just gave me a thumbs down because I'm going to talk about progressions tomorrow. I guess, I don't know. Anyway, y'all have a good day. Love y'all. Even, even you with the thumbs down, you're my favorite. You're my all-time favorite. We're going to make you happy tomorrow. I promise. Have a good day, everybody. I'll see you in the morning for Coffee and Craps and for um, uh, Daily Paycheck. So have a good rest of your Tuesday. Bless y'all. Bye.